I'm talking paints, I'm talking palettes, I'm talking paintbrushes, I'm talking paper. I'm going to be sharing ways that you can save money, especially when it comes to art supplies, even more so if you are a watercolour or gouache lover like myself. It's going to be a chatty one, but it will be worth it because... <laughs> through this video you will be able to save money hey welcome back to my channel if you're like me and you love buying art supplies and you have come to very quickly realize that they add up um <laughs> then this is the video for you first and foremost use one of those toothpaste tube squeezers which i will link down below in the description for you and get every single bit of precious paint out of that tube <laughs> this is going to be a great way to save money because you're essentially going to get at least like maybe a quarter pan of paint out when you think it's empty another thing i would recommend is to look for like offers so for example here in the uk there might be nhs discounts there's a jackson's discount down below in my description which is 10 percent if you use this link down below there might be student discounts membership discounts newsletter discounts or they'll have price matches so it's always worth like checking the price across all the stores and then i tend to just buy from where is cheapest any discount that they have my friend look for it <laughs> consider buying locally and what I mean by that is local to your regions I essentially mean like the continent that you're in the reason that I say this is that there are certain brands that are excellent quality that will be cheaper in certain areas compared to others for example Holbein will be cheaper in Asia than it is in Europe Windsor & Newton is cheaper in Europe than it is in America Daniel Smith is cheaper in America than it is here Schmink is cheaper in Germany and so on and so forth so definitely consider looking at brands that are somewhat local to you or brands that are made at least in the same continent as you another tip is to consider stay wet palettes now my stay wet gouache palette is one of my favorite palettes ever i can genuinely confirm that i have been painting a lot more since i have got that palette they kind of remove this pressure of needing to figure out how much paint i think i'm going to use and then pouring it out on the palette and then potentially wasting it I don't need to pre-estimate how much paint i'm going to use i can just take it straight from the palette mix it and then put it onto my paper if you're using acrylic gouache or acrylic in general then you may also want to consider the flat stay wet palettes that again I'll link down below in the description because they'll basically give you more time with your paints and just slow down their drying time hence as the name they will stay wet especially because acrylic gouache and acrylic once they're dry they don't reactivate so you just want to keep them wet and then use them one thing that I wish I had known when I was starting off with paints is to avoid the big massive sets with lots of colours that I end up not using and to focus on getting a few select colours of good quality paints. Taking it a step further, I would say that if I could do it all again, <laughs> One of the things that I would consider is buying a set of primary colours, like the split primary colours, so a warm and a cool version of the red, blue and yellow. And then when looking at other brands, if I decide to make that investment, it would be to get paints or colours that are special to a certain brand rather than focusing on only getting the set. So to give you an example, I would have maybe gotten the primary set by Daniel Smith that has six split primary colours. When I started venturing into granulating colours, I would have considered getting some schminky tubes of the colours that I like and then maybe if I wanted some different types of granulating colours I would have looked at Roman Schmall and got them from there. If I wanted to try honey based colours then maybe I would have gone to Jackson's and got their brands or I would have gotten M. Graham. Each different paint has different qualities that make them special but when it comes down to it when you're looking at the like primaries the main colours for the most part especially if you're a beginner I don't think that there is much benefit in just getting the same yellow across all all the different brands and the same red across all the different brands and the same blue across all the different brands which is essentially what you are doing when you buy the sets now I know I love buying sets don't need a complete set but I like them coming in sets but if I were to think about saving money and buying wisely then that is something that I would do buy the primary set and then instead of replicating the primary sets over and over and over again by buying all these different sets I would only get specialty sets either getting special colors from particular brands or I would get the palettes that are made that are curated by artists that come with different colors don't be afraid to customize your palettes don't be afraid to buy single paints you don't have to buy the sets all the time you can just buy individual tubes 
There is so much information out there, so many different products, so much invested into marketing that sometimes it can feel overwhelming. And so a great way to save money is to learn from others and be part of a community. On my community tab, hundreds of artists share their practices, opinions and tips. So take part if you haven't already done so and keep an eye out for my polls and my posts. There is a saying that a foolish man continuously makes the same mistakes. A clever man learns from their mistakes, but a wise man learns from the mistakes of others, which to me really highlights the value of learning from other people. I've created over a hundred (laughs) videos transparently sharing my art journey, my mistakes, my tips, my tricks, and more. And there are so many other YouTube videos and YouTube artists. Be wise and learn from them. On top of that, I read all my comments and I'm always happy to answer questions. And if you want something even more personal, more resources, exclusive videos, direct access, and to have conversation with other artists and myself about supplies or art related practices, then join my Kofi, which I'll link down below for you. You'll be amazed to know how much easier and how much more fun an art journey can be if you don't do it on your own. It's the equivalent of Patreon, so it supports this channel, but more than that, it is also a really lovely community of artists. A special thank you to all my Kofi members who not only keep this channel running, but honestly, I'm having so much fun getting to know you. So thank you so much. If you have fellow art friends who also love watercolour, then consider sharing (laughs) or doing maybe like an exchange so that you get to try their art supplies, they get to try your art supplies and then you get to find out if you actually like it and want to invest or if you don't like it and you're actually fine with whatever art supplies you already have. Try to consider samples or trying like individual sheets. Jackson's, for example, sells sample papers, but a lot of different art shops as well will have like lots of different samples which are at lower price points just so that you can find out whether you like something or not before you invest in getting a massive pack. Once you have a brand that you like, and this is thinking about paper, it's quite often more cost effective to consider getting a roll. I personally don't do that because one, I haven't found a paper that I absolutely love yet. And two, like my personality type isn't the type that really wants to be struggling to cut the paper up and store the paper and etc. Like maybe one day, but for now, no. But it is a good way to save money because rolls end up being a lot cheaper than pads, which end up being a lot cheaper than blocks. My next tip would be dot cards and this can be hit or miss depending on where you are, what brands you're getting, cost, it's all price dependent for me. So if you don't know, dot cards are essentially a piece of watercolour paper that has dots of paint of watercolor paint that then enables you to reactivate the watercolors and then swatch them yourself and maybe sometimes you get enough to actually do a little painting to just get a better idea of the colors the quality of the paints how they work how they mix in order to enable you to make an informed decision as to which colors you want to get but also it's nice to kind of have a bank of the dot cards (laughs) now the reason that i say that they are hit or miss is that if you get a good substantial amount of paint then it is most often worth it if you get a small amount of paint for a lot of money then you're probably better off watching someone's youtube video like for example kim crick she does really good swatching videos and getting the information from there the colors won't be the same colors change with screens but for example i bought a set of dot cards for 25 pounds i like having it but it wasn't worth £25 in my opinion. It would have been better for me to just watch someone else's video with the where it's being swatched and then use that £25 to buy five of the colours that I ended up buying. So again, I think you have to weigh it up. Whereas some people have like since messaged me and let me know that they can get that same dot card for £10, £12. So for that price, it would probably be worth it. And also some places will do free dot cards. So if it's free, then definitely pick, pick it up, (laughs) pick it up, swatch it. At first, I would probably start off with smaller tubes, especially if I don't know if I like that color or if I like that particular brand. But once I know that I like a certain color or I like a certain brand, then it's always worth considering buying them in bigger tubes, especially if it's a color that you tend to use up quite a lot because they tend to be more value for money. This is somewhat easier said than done, at least for me. And that would be... (laughs) In terms of like upgrading your skills, especially if you're into watercolour, upgrade your paper before you upgrade your paints. I am not, I'm definitely not practising what I preach, but 
<laughs> but it, it, it does make sense. Ultimately, things that can have the biggest impact in terms of improving your art when starting off, it would be the paper first, then the paint, and then the brushes. So for me, I don't like buying super expensive brushes. I also don't feel the need to buy like any animal brushes and I've gotten by okay. And ultimately your paints will last you such a long time. Paper is what you're going to run out of. So if you have to pick between one or the other, that would be my advice, go for paper first. Another thing that you might want to consider, and it isn't perfect, but it kind of gets you to dip your toe in gouache if you're not sure about it yet, buy a more affordable set. For example, the Himimiya gouache set, you get quite a lot of gouache. And I've done a video, which I will link down below, where I kind of describe the differences between that and my favorite gouache, which is currently the Windsor & Newton. Consider buying like a more affordable, but also please good quality set of paints. I made the mistake when I started off of buying <laughs> such poor quality paints that it honestly almost completely discouraged me from doing art so I think there is a balance when you're doing it you want to buy something that is affordable but is still good quality rather than something that is affordable but just just filler you consider getting um small studio sets so sometimes they'll have like pocket set or studio sets or even student sets of brands like uh, Windsor and Newton Cotman, Paul Rubens, Roman Schmoll, White Knight just these brands that are somewhat known and that have like stood the test of time and make good quality paints I would personally say that it is better for you to get a set of 12 paints for 15 pounds or 20 pounds that's student grade from one of these brands that I've mentioned than it would be to buy a set of no shade um 48 paints for 20 pounds in a beautiful box and the paints are complete trash just don't do it <laughs> you're not saving yourself anything in the long run in my personal opinion you're just buying frustration DIY wise things that I use that effectively end up saving me money are um, jars so I like to reuse jars like food jars for example and I'll use that as my water jar whether I am painting in the studio or whether I am going outdoors another thing that you can consider is to use a towel like a small hand towel rather than using paper towels over and over to dab off excess water and excess paint and then you can wash it and reuse it if you love plein air painting as well or you love travel sketching or or urban sketching then another thing that you might want to consider is to reuse those little tins that you get mints in filling them up with half pans or quarter pans or full pans whichever size pan you want and then painting with them and turn that into your own travel palette so you don't have to go out and buy a really fancy palette <laughs> Another key thing is taking care of the supplies that you already have. When it comes to brushes, even when you're painting, you know, just be mindful to take them out of water once you've cleaned them and you're switching between the brushes, making sure that they actually dry out properly not storing them upright like this when they are still wet because that just means that the water tends to sit towards the bottom of the bristles and that can also be damaging for your brushes my brushes tend to be quite inexpensive synthetic brushes and for the most part they have served me very very well main thing that you don't want the bristles to come off so <laughs> that is just so annoying especially when you're doing watercolor paintings so just look for some brands like um, i'll link it down below princeton is quite good pro art also the Lerouni is quite good, Jackson's is quite good, and these brands tend to do quite affordable paint brushes. You don't need that many paint brushes. I'd say you probably want a big round brush, a small round brush, maybe a medium brush, but definitely when you're looking at sets to buy, double check to make sure that the numbers are not too close together because then you end up getting brushes that you don't necessarily need or you could have gotten away with not getting them and instead getting a brush that's a different size to bring some diversity to your artwork and the other thing is in terms of shapes I like round and I like filbert as well so look at the shapes that you like I started off with an inexpensive set of brushes. I then observed to see which ones was I drawn to, which ones did I use over and over again, and which ones were still in pristine conditions. And it was the ones that I had used and battered that I then knew I liked those sizes and I liked those shapes. And they're the ones that I invested in and got better quality of. Another thing to save money is to avoid duplicates. And the way to do that is to have a list of all the paints that you have, or even better, create a swatch book where you swatch all your art supplies. You can then use this for reference when shopping online and take it to art stores with you where you can swatch, compare and avoid duplicates. I talk through my swatch book in two videos, which I'll link for you. 
I think that it would be beneficial to have some idea about the different pigments and the different pigments that you like and their different names because they range from brand to brand and sometimes there can be quite a bit of confusion around that. So if you have a bit of an understanding, you can avoid buying duplicates, you can be more mindful of which colours you actually want to get, you can make decisions considering the fact that some may fade and some may not. So it may help you make a bit of a more informed decision when it comes to actually buying. Now this is a bit of a fun one that will also save you money and for example if you were thinking about getting um, the super granulating paints or you wanted to make a certain colour then consider just mixing them yourself. If you have the tubes of paints already then you could mix them and add them to a half pan, let them dry and then you have your own specialty colour right there. And with a few tubes of paint you can create your own special colours. This is not only useful for when creating convenience colours that you don't want to mix over and over but also if you wanted to create for example super granulating colors if you pick a few select colors by Schmincke you would be able to mix them yourself as opposed to buying all the colors individually. So with palettes there are some places like children's stores that will sell palette paper which in theory is like quite affordable but otherwise the easier way would probably be to have a white plate that's essentially all you need and quite often you will end up finding quite great bargains if you look in charity shops things to take with a pinch of salt <laughs> one is holes so if you're trying to save money i don't think it's the wisest thing to do to watch art halls and i love art halls i find them so inspiring i love seeing all the art supplies that are out there that i didn't know about that people are loving but by the nature of watching them i then want to buy more so especially if it's an artist that i really like or whose art i really like i almost automatically assume that if I have those same art supplies, my art will also improve to their degree, which is not true. <laughs> like Just because they have it doesn't mean that I have to have it too. And I think that sometimes one of the difficulties with social media and with watching art halls is that when you see it, you want it. And it's not necessarily the healthiest of things to adopt, especially if you're trying to save money. So if you're trying to save money and you know that you have the self-control of steel and you're not going to be swayed by someone showing you the art supplies that they've bought, then fantastic. But if like, like me you will watch one and then be like hmm I feel like I need this in my life too then perhaps it's worth having a bit of a break when it comes to sales uh sales again take with a pinch of salt there will be like black friday sales christmas sales amazon will do a sale once a year called an amazon prime sale as well so there are plenty of sales going around especially when products are being launched ultimately it doesn't matter how good the sale is if it's something that you do not need you are wasting money by buying it. It doesn't matter how good the discount. Another thing I would like to encourage you to remember is that not all sales are equal. And for some reason, quite a few stores have started either marking things as special price, but the price doesn't actually change, it's just red. Or sometimes things will be on sale, but they're only taking off 2%, sometimes even 1%. So just be mindful of that because you may not be getting as good a deal as you think you are. And a good way to double check is this regard that RRP that they put on the side because no one goes by that price but maybe have a look at other stores and see what they are selling and if they're not on sale you have a good idea of what the normal price is versus what this store is selling and then you can figure out whether the sale is actually a good price or you can be like me and spend too much time on these sites and realize that the price hasn't actually changed. A quick heads up because I've noticed things like that happening as well and sometimes prices get put up and then they're put on sale but the sale price is actually the same as it was before so just be vigilant and don't be distracted by the fact that it's a sale and actually make the numbers make sense one of the things that's helped me kind of navigate this is by creating a list so I will have a wish list of things that I want to get but anything can go on this list the thing is that I can't buy it straight away um I like to give myself a few weeks before I buy any of these things with the hope that they'll go on sale or something will happen the purpose of this list is that I will then look back on it a time after more often than not I will remove something that I thought I wanted that with time I realized I didn't want as much and if there is a sale bring back this list 
look at this list and see if any of the items that you actually want are on sale and if they're not walk away <laughs> i have a 10 percent discount code down below in the description so if you've never bought from jackson's before and you want to buy now then check that out if you are still watching then you are most definitely a real mvp and i really 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 appreciate you let me know that you're still watching by sharing any money saving tips that you have down below in the description i recently did a no buy and as part of that i had a whole bunch of different challenges and techniques that I was employing in order to actually stick with it. I'm going to share all of that in a separate video so definitely check that out as it's going to help you with saving as well. I'll give you one bonus one and that is having an inventory. Sometimes it's just so helpful to have a list of what you already have so if you want to see that then definitely check out that video. Thank you so much and I'll see you next week. Bye! Mm -hmm.